We are here with Josh Emery uh, with Nightwing's Bat Solutions. So what are we going to do today? Uh, we're going to be doing an exclusion of about 200 female bats from this home. Yup, he said 200. And while we didn't actually see any bats, it was pretty easy to tell they were there. Oh my goodness. Here, if you get a little higher here, you can see the mass amount of bat dropping. Holy crap. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. This oh, coloration God. on the beams yeah. is from their urine. It's urine staining. Wow, it smells like urine in here. Now you might be at home thinking, how can you tell it's bat guano? If you smush it like that and you shine a light on it, you can see how it looks like there's kind of glitter in there. Yeah. It's undigested insect limbs. Just squish it in your hand. Yeah, Josh, I can't help but notice you're not a bit squeamish about uh, squishing bat poop in your hand. It's uh, <laughs> not, not the first time you've done that, I guess. It wasn't. And if you think that's gross, you haven't seen anything yet. Josh says the urine from the bats in the attic forces sap to seep from the wood in the home. And, well, I'll let him explain. So you Alex, end up with kind of here? these uh, sort of sure. stalactites of urine and sap. Uh, stalactites of urine and sap. It's kind of poetic for being so incredibly disgusting. Yeah. For all those of you out there pushing your breakfast plates aside right now, we'll spare you any further gross details. The point is, it's gross. And the family, kind enough to let us shoot this segment, was ready to see their unwanted guests move along. And that's why we were there. Well, I'd say, I'd say it's safe to assume we have discovered uh, where they go to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> so let's go find out where they're getting in and out. Sounds Shall good. Shall we? Bat hunting. Bats, as it ends up, are much smaller than they seem, able to fit through a hole about the size of your index finger. So, our job was to find those holes and plug them with what Josh calls exclusionary doors. He's the only person that does this, and he perfected this. Uh, and it works. I've probably made 10,000 of them, I'd say. Good lord. You see. A lot of bats not happy with you. Josh's design allows the bats to leave the house but not to come back in. He can make a door in just a few minutes. Angie and I cannot. Angie, when you got into meteorology, did you ever think you'd be uh, sitting around making bat exclusion doors? You know what? That's what I hope for. And my dreams, dream, my right? dreams have come true yeah. in Iowa. Am I doing this right so far? The next step, obviously, is to install those doors. Unfortunately, that meant taking many steps up a ladder onto a roof. And then in some cases, literally hanging off the side of that roof, most of which was accomplished by Gerald. Gerald's got uh, you know, a toe each on the last rung of this ladder, precariously perched on the uh, corner of this roof. And he's wildly explaining things with his hands. <laughs> Not one bit of fear in his eye. After installing a few doors and caulking some smaller areas where bats could enter the home, we were done, and I, is able to come down off the roof to this off the desk. So you're saying right now there's hundreds of bats up here in this attic with us? Yeah, somewhere. 100, 150, maybe even 200 bats. That's a frightening answer. 